Hey, hello everyone. I hope you all are enjoying the conference so far. I am Gokul Prabharan. I am from Rewards Organization from Capital One. I am here to talk about the lessons we learned from our experience of building a cloud-native platform, which currently processes billions of customer transactions yearly and which provides the earn for all of our credit card transactions. So that platform is called Rewards and that's where uh, we come from. And uh, we have built this platform ground up uh, on cloud native. So all the all the things which we are discussing are going to discuss the, the talk is more from those experience. So before we dive into the topic, few details about Capital Loan. Capital Loan is the first US bank to exit out of on-prem directory data center and go all in cloud. So you can imagine how much of a technology transformation a company has to go through to pull it off this kind of a feat, right? It's a, it's a massive change Capital Loan has gone through in the last few years. And we have last year in 2020, we completely exited out of data centers. All our workloads now that's in public cloud. So that's why we think we are a tech company which happens to be in banking business. So we are a founder-led company which till date stays true to its mission of change banking for good. We give back to our communities in a lot of ways, especially when it comes to the tech. We have contributed lots of open source projects to call few names, critical stack, a security focused Kubernetes offering, Rubicon, uh, ML model tracking tool. Capital One Coders program inspires future generation by educating, mentoring, and empowering students to realize their potential as technologies. So this is the program which we have invested and it is conducted in middle school students to see their potential as future technologies. And Capital One has invested in Capital One Coda program, which provides the pathway for non-technical aspirants to get to, to a technical career and see how they can also get into the technology part, right? So these are all the ways in which we are giving back to the community. I have just called out few things which are very close to the technology space. So here is the agenda. Like since I was not sure of the pulse to the audience, so I thought I will just quickly glimpse over what is Apache Spark, Sandra, and MongoDB, because that is what forms the base for our uh, entire discussion today. And that's what is actually the base for this whole platform we have built as well. And we will see about the rewards platform and its architecture at a very high level in Capital One, which makes use of this technology, whatever I mentioned. And then I Sorry, slightly quick. Yeah, then I would like to take you all on a trip to Cassandra land and Mongo land in TCP IP spot. You can see the fun in there and leaving some room for Q&A at the end. So first we will start with a quick refresher on uh, these three technologies which forms the base for our discussion. So Apache Spark is a widely popular in-memory parallel processing framework, which, which, is, which is very famous for processing big data uh, workloads. And any typical Spark cluster will have a master node, driver node, and bunch of executors. Depending on your type of operation, like it can be client or cluster mode. So depending on that, your driver is decided where it resides. But beyond that, whenever a, a particular a big data 
processing is uh, submitted to the master it is sent to the driver and uh, whenever an action is performed it is it is done lazily and whenever an action is performed that's when the transformations are pushed to the executor and the executor processes those transformation and gives back the information back to the driver and that's how the framework revolves right so that's a very high level uh, uh, thing about apache spark which is a very popular parallel processing uh, framework which is widely adopted and it is known for processing petabytes of uh, data and our platform also utilizes uh, apache spark for processing uh, credit card transactions every day moving on apache spark another one apache spark and the mongodb forms our backend and apache spark is a widely used columnar nosql database which actually doesn't follow a primary secondary uh, structure and all the nodes are same in uh, cassandra cluster where it majorly differs from rdbms or any other uh, database offering is its use case driven modeling right what i mean by that is in any typical sql world you define your uh, schema and uh, application just makes use of the schema and if there is any change in use case you typically doesn't go and change your uh, table schema and you will be able to even query using a different column but that's not how cassandra works it's a it's a completely opposite way where you always have to start from your use case how what is the query pattern you are going to consume the data depending on that you go back and design your application in case if there is a change in a need a use case evolves you probably have to duplicate your data and that's what drives actually as a partition key in cassandra and that's the only way you will be able to access your data too moving on to mongodb it's another popular nosql offering which follows the primary secondary model depending on your use case you can always go to primary to get your reads and to your writes and if your application is okay to get the stale information you can even go to the secondary and get the information but the major difference or advantage with mongodb is its schemaless document design so all the documents it stores in the collection as json so that's where it provides that schemaless pattern for any use case or any application which wants to leverage that right with this let's move on to reverse architecture at a very high level in capital one right this is a probably a 10000 foot, foot view of what we do so we process all credit card transactions like if you if you owned or used any of our credit card it touches our application and we process those transaction and provide customer earn right so that processing is computed using apache spark and our backend is cassandra on mongo and that's what uh, forms any of our use case be a customer logging in to a web page mobile or getting statements all those things this is the information which is fed there right so so we have built this platform ground up in cloud native architecture and while we were developing this we have come across some issues or some different patterns in which we we had some struggles right so that's what i thought maybe uh, that's that's lessons is good to share with the broader community so it, it may be helpful for someone else right this is the platform which processes all millions of transactions every day and billions of transactions yearly and provides millions of miles cash and points to our customer and has a positive impact on customers life with that context about our application the tech stack and all our data stores i think now we are ready to start our adventurous journey in tcp ip spark we will begin our journey exploring cassandra land first and gather some valuable tips aka souvenirs a famous ride in cassandra land is 
token ring terris wheel all the customers who are uh, riding the terris wheel and their details are persisted in the back end cassandra as like this and uh, there is a season pass holder called do who has gone missing and uh, we are trying to find his whereabouts and we called in the park security and they are also trying to find uh, his whereabouts and they are using a query like this to find the whereabouts on the data seems like something has gone wrong and the system is responding like this this is not something new when something goes wrong in your back end or your application right seems like we are seeing the spinning wheel do you see what what has caused this problem that what has happened right that's what actually uh, the lesson here if you, if you see this whole pattern the lesson here is cassandra key sequence matters while querying by inherent nature of how cassandra persists the data in the disk the key sequence if it is not followed it will not be able to fetch the data quickly from its partitions instead it will be doing table scan for each and every query straining your back end and brings down the back end as well if you have noticed park security when they were querying they are actually querying the keys in a slightly different order so when they change the key sequence and they realize in the correct date they are able to find the whereabouts of mr do and it seems like do has actually gone to a gift shop to buy tcp ip spark souvenirs like it is always important to get some souvenirs to remember your park visit it is just as important as to mind your cassandra key sequences as well moving on the another popular ride in cassandra land is partitioner roller coaster if you select the correct seat aka partition key you will be able to get back to your base station in a exhilarating milliseconds right while customers are enjoying their roller coaster ride their information is persisted in the back end like this it is important because or like any other roller coaster ride partition roller coaster also provides lockers for keeping your valuables while you are on ride but sometimes customers they may be they may be in a hurry to board the ride or they may like to keep the things close by right if you are one of these people it is easy to think when you are on ride you can assume that the things may fall out of your packet or even when you are done with the ride you may be excited to move on to the next ride and you forget the things so this this is not a, a, a unique story it is a very common story which has happened in my life it probably would have happened to a lot a lot of people life on a excitement we probably may forget a lot of things so whenever this kind of uh, thing happens the roller coaster operator actually has to find out who are the people who took the ride today because there is something we found and we have to get that back to the customer right if you see the cassandra structure and the use case which arise out of this sudden need the the key lesson here is cassandra keys needs to be determined as i previously mentioned when you are designing your application in the beginning itself that's how cassandra evolves you will be able to see if you see the cassandra keys defined for this there is no way you will be able to get the information for a given day because the key is defined as customer specific one so if you if you move ahead and try to query this same table for uh, for uh, another key like the date 
it's not an optimal way to do. You will be able to do the same, but it is more like a table scan, which is considered as a, actually an anti-pattern. Because of the way in which Cassandra data is partitioned, it is always the only way you will be able to pull the data back. If you if you have processed the same information, I think it's the same the table, whatever we have defined, it is actually considered as a anti-pattern. And that's what actually we're calling it as use case driven modeling. Right? If you if you have a need to pull the data for a particular use case, you have to define your partition key upfront. And that's the only way you will be able to get your data back. So design your partition key. If there is a need arises, then the data producer actually has to duplicate the data as the usage evolves. You will not be able to utilize the same table as it is RDBMS. I hope you probably were able to gather some valuable information and also some important souvenirs from TCP IP Spark. Now we are heading into the much awaited Mongoland. Important ride in Mongoland is schemaless carousel where customers are going round and round and their information is persisted in the back end like this. From our visit to Cassandra land, we know Do is a season pass holder in TCP IP Spark. Now, the park authorities have decided to bump up Mr. Doe's membership to a higher membership tier, and we need to process this update in the system. In order to process this information, where Doe has gone into a different higher tier, when we tried, the carousel to stop, and the other riders were unhappy, and the ride is being slowed down, and it is interrupted. You guys can see why or what would have caused this from the information we have. The lesson here is Mongo connections should be always handled at the JVM or the partition level when it comes to the Spark processing. If you are not handling your partitions, I mean the connections at the partition level, there is a possibility that your application may open up a lot of unwanted connections depending on where you are doing. I have provided this uh, snippet where it shows presumably where probably we should be handling the connections. And it has the potential to bring down your application and also your database cluster, which probably makes the other carousel riders unhappy. Moving on. While we are recovering from the schemaless carousel debacle, we still have in process Mr. Doe's membership update. So while we are attempting to do that, we are, we are getting the spinning Paris wheel, just like our visit to Cassandra land. From this, you can probably can see what maybe what is causing the issue while we are trying to process so those membership update. The lesson here is Mongo indexes are very important. And it is actually helpful in the cases where you have to find and update some information like those membership upgrade, where those is already our customer and we are upgrading his membership status, where we have to find his information and then update. So that in those kind of cases, keys play a major role. If that is not the case, each and every update actually has to do again a table scan. So in order to avoid, we need to ensure we have right keys and we make use of those keys. I hope you probably would have enjoyed your trip to Cassandra and Mongolan in TCP IP Spark. Some details about me. <laughs> I am Gokul Prabhar, an engineering manager, Capitalon. I have been developing applications in Apache Spark and also Java from initial versions of it. And 
I am actually very interested in distributed computing, and I have written lots of blogs for Capitol Tech, especially in the areas of big data and NoSQL processing. And I have provided my social handles if anyone is interested to connect. What's in your wallet? Thanks everyone for the opportunity. If you have liked what you, are, you have heard and want to be part of the platform, which processes the billions of customer transactions yearly, we are hiring, reach out to me. Thank you everyone once again for the opportunity. I mean, now, now I open up for questions if there are any questions.